This is Drake's Head on the Pacific Coast. There isn't a more murderous stretch of rocks anywhere in the world. Two opposing ocean currents meet here. They form a turbulent underwater stream that, hidden from sight, rushes out to sea. I was desperately searching from the cliffs above for one of my students, a student who couldn't walk and had only recently learned to dive. She was diving with her husband. And I was sure their lives would be endangered in these waters. I didn't know that danger was what he wanted, that there was almost no chance that Dinah would come up alive, because she was not only diving with her husband, she was diving with death. Talk about me just as soon as I'm gone. Gusta. The legs are almost useless. How did it happen? A mountain climbing accident about a year ago. Dr. Johnson is one of the best neurologists in the country, and he feels there's nothing more he can do for Dinah. Water therapy seems to be the only way back. The physical state of her leg muscles and nerves warrant a greater mobility than she shows. She must be made to use her legs. Why, doesn't she want to? Well, it's pretty dull just to kick your feet in a pool. That's why I sent for you. You mean you want to use scuba diving as a therapy? Yes. I thought Mr. Garrick's idea was a very practical one. What's so amusing? Oh, it isn't. It's just that I've been trying to sell this idea to the medical profession for years. You mean for general use, as in polio? Why not? It gives the patient an incentive. It makes him equal to the others when he's in the water. Mr. Nelson, you help Dinah Garrick, and I'll sell your idea to the medical profession. You'll take the job? I've been waiting for it. Well, Mr. Nelson, she's in your hands. I'll be in touch with you. Nice meeting you, Dr. Nice Johnson. meeting you. Never mind, Mr. Garrick, I can find my way out. Uh, how do you think your wife will take to scuba diving? Well, she loved swimming before the accident. Uh, no problem, then. How about you? You like to take some lessons? Well, as far as scuba diving is concerned, you'll have to count me out. I've thought of it, but I seem to have some sort of claustrophobia. Just couldn't do it. I'll let it body. Well, uh, I can start with her tomorrow in the pool, if that's OK with you. Wonderful. Let's go talk to her. According to the log that I kept on Dinah Garrick, her first lesson with the snorkel and mask took place on July 5th in her pool. She showed no fear of water. The next day, July the 6th, I took her snorkel diving in a calm ocean cove near her home. I knew that seeing the flora and fauna of the sea would quicken her interest in swimming. A week later, July the 12th, I took her to a moderate depth. No panic, no alarm. I was sure that the excitement of diving would hold her through a long course of water therapy. In order to make Dinah use her legs for extended periods but without strain, I employed a water scooter. This permitted many variations of motion. Every muscle of her legs got its share of gentle movement. This involved her making the transition from snorkel to scuba. took to underwater breathing like a fish. I applied this therapy for two weeks. During the 
following seven days, I took Dinah deeper in slow stages. 30 feet, 40 feet, and at the end of the fourth week, on August the 2nd, according to my log, to 60 feet. I congratulated myself on having found the perfect student. But suddenly a manta ray flashed into view. It saw us and charged, or so Dinah thought. She panicked and started to surface fast, dangerously fast. But I got to her in time, held her down. She'd forgotten that fast surfacing from depth can give you the bends, and that bends can kill. was all fun and frolic. It was during the next week that Dinah met her first seal. He saw us cavorting and promptly began to imitate us. The same day, Dinah had her first proof that seals can talk. We could hear the noise that these mammals make underwater. Dinah back now. She claimed every other living thing in the sea as friend and playmate. She seemed never to get tired, and in the water, never even gave the weakness of her legs a thought. This after barely a month and a half of treatment. On August 15th, that Paul Garrick, with odd thoughts going through his head, was watching us after a day's swim. Well, it's been exactly six weeks today since we started. Mike? What do you really think? I think it's time for Dr. Johnson to come and take a look at you. I do feel stronger. Mike! Do that, no, no, stay there, Micah. I think I can make it. Not now, Dinah. Let Dr. Johnson tell you when. Stay there. I'll come to you. Now watch me. Oh. Oh, I could have sworn I was able to walk. Don't rush it. It'll come back again. You never did tell me exactly how it happened. Mine? Climbing Mount Whitney. Paul and I had been married a year. Yeah, I understand he was a guide at one time. We were crossing the ice. I slipped. Paul reached out to grab me. He almost went over himself. I, I guess I was lucky. I, I landed on a narrow ledge. You know, Mike, it's only since we started that I'm really glad I lived. And you will walk. Your legs are getting stronger every day. I'll have you to thank for it. Go on. Put your arm around me. The 
That same day, something happened in the waters at Drake's Head. A man was caught in the underwater current. He was no ordinary swimmer. Powerful and deep-chested, he knew how to use his body and wind. He knew how to bounce off the bottom. He knew how to twist with the current to keep from being broken apart. And he rolled with the murderous underwater punches. He held when he could and used his arms and fins with a skill of long experience. Finally, he worked himself to the edge of the current and got out alive. The swimmer was Paul Garrick, the man who said he was afraid to swim underwater. He was calm and unruffled by his battle with the current because it had been a deliberate experiment. He had tested a murder weapon, the underwater current. His victim was to be his rich wife, Dinah Garrick. By the end of my second month with Dinah, I didn't think of swimming as therapy for her, except when I made progress entries in my log. Every day held something new for her. We discovered an old sunken hulk. Dinah brought sketching materials along. She proceeded to draw the old wreck at 50 feet below the surface. Her mental attitude had completely changed. She now knew certainly that one day soon she would walk again. It was this same day, September 3rd, that she tried to show me that she already could walk. You ready for that? Paul drove me in to see Dr. Johnson yesterday. What did he say? He said to try it. As soon as I thought that I could. With help. Swimming. That's right. Let's ride back in Sierra. That's wonderful. That was great. Oh. This Paul. Hi, Paul. Boy, you should have seen your wife just now. I saw her. I saw you both. What do you mean? I mean I know what's been going on. What's on your mind? I saw that touching tableau. You were too interested to notice anything. Paul, what are you talking about? You're way off course, Garrick. Am I? This isn't the first time I've seen you getting chummy with my wife. You can't seem to stay away from her. Paul, you're imagining. There's been nothing. Sure, there's nothing in your mind. Send me your bill. You're through. He's dead wrong, of course, you know that. Yes, I know, Mike. I want you to stay. I say he doesn't. Sorry, Dinah. Ramming Paul Garrick's words down his throat would do Dinah no good. 
It would be best for her if I just faded out of the picture. She could get another instructor. The next morning, there was no new instructor for Dinah. Her husband had told her that he had overcome his fear of diving, that he had a wonderful surprise for her. Hi, Mike. Hi, Clark. How you been, boy? Fine. I'm returning your tanks. How's Mrs. Garrick doing? You want me to pump these? No, going back home. Something came up. Oh, that's what Mr. Garrick meant this morning. He was here? Yeah, first thing this morning, about 7 o'clock. Bought a mess of scuba equipment. It works. For whom? For himself. Joked about the student going to be the teacher. And he's going to be the student. You mean she's going to teach him? I guess so. He was trying on the face mask. I'll be back for my deposit here. Oh, wait a minute. It only takes a second. I'll see you later, huh? I looked for them at the cove where Dine and I usually swam. They were nowhere in sight. Gustav. Mr. Nelson, you're back. Mr. and Mrs. Garrett. Where are they, you know? They went diving. I don't know where, but they took Mr. Garrett's car. How long will they leave? About a half hour. You see, sweetheart, my jealousy of Mike Nelson didn't start just yesterday. It started the first day he came. So without telling you, I learned how to dive myself. You said you didn't like it, that you were afraid of it. Well, I guess my jealousy was stronger. I'm glad you were jealous. Now we can swim together, for hours, every day. We'll be together again. Well, Mrs. Garrick, shall we swim? I drove down the coast to other places where they might have gone to swim. The idea of Dinah teaching Paul was insane. Being able to swim didn't make her a competent teacher. The chance of their getting into trouble even of drowning, was too great. On Garrick's car, I knew that they were somewhere nearby. But why here? Why had they gone diving in these dangerous waters? Garrick played it safe for himself while he guaranteed his wife's death. He led her down to 60 feet to a place near the underwater current, to a place where if she were helpless, she would be gradually sucked into the overpowering turbulence.
Dinah, unsuspecting, became interested in the new kind of shells on this new part of the ocean floor. Garrick unhooked his overloaded weight belt, and then quickly, before she knew what he was doing, he put the extra belt around her and wired it to her. I swam down, looking around. Then I saw them, and was about to swim to them. Had Garrick gone mad? I could see him rip off her mask and pull out her mouthpiece. I lunged to help Dinah. But Garrick saw me coming and met me with a drawn knife. Now it was a fight not only for Dinah's life, but for my own as well. Garrick himself had been sucked into the deadly current. But this time, exhausted by his battle with me, he couldn't overcome its murderous force. He was caught, hopelessly, in his own death trap. I couldn't get to him in time. The current swept him out to sea. That's what he intended for me. You walked all the way over here? Yes. Maybe I couldn't walk because even though I love Paul, I've always been afraid of him. Yeah? How long's that been going on? Since the day on the mountain. The day I fell. Or should I say, since the day he pushed me. Now I know. The thing for you to remember now is that you're well again. That you can walk. I'm Lloyd Bridges, inviting you to join us for another action-packed story of underwater adventure one week from today. <laughs>